In the quiet streets of Borough Park, Brooklyn, a tight-knit community lived in a blissful state of harmony. But beneath the surface of this seemingly idyllic neighborhood, darkness lurked. It was on a fateful summer day, when the sun's rays cast long shadows that the tranquility shattered and an unspeakable horror unfolded. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeco, where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you. Levy was born on July 11, 2001, to Nachman Kletsky and Esti Forster Kletsky, both members of the Boyner Hasidic community residing in Borough Park, Brooklyn. He was the cherished third child and only son in a family of six children. Levy's parents were deeply religious and followed the traditions and teachings of their faith. They raised their children in an environment steeped in Hasidic customs, values, and observance. As a young boy, Levy was known for his curiosity, warmth, and infectious smile. He brought immense joy to his family and those around him. Levy's parents, Nachman and Esti, provided a nurturing and loving home, instilling in him the values of compassion, kindness, and respect for others. They emphasized the importance of family, community, and faith in shaping his character. Levy's upbringing was deeply rooted in his religious heritage. He attended Yeshiva Boyan Tifir's Mordecai Shlomo, a school that provided a strong foundation in both secular and religious education. The school played a significant role in Levy's life, shaping his worldview and fostering his intellectual growth. Like any child, Levy had dreams and aspirations. He possessed a natural curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. He was an active participant in his studies and demonstrated a remarkable dedication to learning. Levy's parents and teachers nurtured his academic abilities, encouraging him to excel in his studies and pursue his passions. Beyond his academic pursuits, Levy was an active member of his community. He participated in various community events and religious observances, embracing the rich traditions of his faith. Levy's commitment to his community was evident in his desire to walk home from the day camp a testament to his growing sense of independence and responsibility. Levy's life was filled with love, warmth, and the promise of a bright future. He was adored by his family, respected by his peers, and cherished by his community. His untimely death shattered the hearts of those who knew him and resonated with people far beyond the boundaries of Borough Park. On July 11, 2011, Tragedy struck when eight-year-old Levy Kletsky vanished as he made his way home from his day camp in Borough Park, Brooklyn. His parents had allowed him to walk home alone, a milestone in his young life, but little did they know the horrors that awaited him on that fateful day. As the news of Levy's disappearance spread, the tight-knit Orthodox Jewish community rallied together, determined to find the young boy. The New York City Police Department launched a comprehensive search effort, employing canine units, mounted police, helicopters, and an array of resources to locate Libby. In a remarkable show of unity and solidarity, up to 5,000 Orthodox Jewish volunteers, coordinated by the Brooklyn South Shamrim Volunteer Civilian Patrol, joined the search. They calmed the neighborhood and surrounding areas, tirelessly scoring every block, store, and residence in the hopes of finding any trace of the missing boy. As the search unfolded, surveillance camera footage along Levy's intended route provided crucial leads. The videos revealed Levy meeting an unfamiliar man outside a dentist's office. This man seemed to engage in a conversation with the unsuspecting boy before they both entered his car. This information led the police to identify the man as Levy Aaron, a 35-year-old resident of Brooklyn. 
The investigation took a horrifying turn when the police discovered Libby's dismembered body in Aaron's Kensington apartment on July 13, 2011. Additional remains were found in a dumpster in the Greenwood Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn. The news of Libby's brutal murder sent shockwaves through the community and beyond, leaving all who heard the tragic tale in a state of disbelief and mourning. Levy Aaron, the man responsible for this heinous crime, was taken into custody and subsequently confessed to the kidnapping and murder of Libby Kletsky. Aaron's chilling handwritten confession detailed the events leading up to Libby's death, revealing the harrowing moments that unfolded in the aftermath of his abduction. The case of Libby Kletsky drew comparisons to the notorious 1979 kidnapping of six-year-old Etin Patz, who vanished while walking to a school bus. The heart-wrenching similarities between these two cases served as a haunting reminder of the vulnerability of innocent children and the devastating impact such crimes have on communities. As the details of the investigation unfolded, the community mourned the loss of young Libby Kletsky. His funeral, attended by thousands of Orthodox Jews who traveled from far and wide, was a poignant display of collective grief and unity. The memory of Libby's vibrant spirit and the love he brought into the lives of those around him served as a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. In the wake of this tragedy, questions arose about how such a heinous act could occur in a neighborhood considered safe and close-knit. The shocking nature of the crime led to reflections on community safety, the protection of children, and the need for enhanced security measures. On July 14, 2011, Levi Aaron made his first appearance in Brooklyn Criminal Court, where he pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against him. His defense attorney claimed that Aaron suffered from hallucinations and heard voices, prompting the court to order a psychiatric evaluation and transfer him to Bellevue Hospital Center for assessment. The psychiatric evaluation revealed that Aaron had an adjustment disorder and was confused, <laughs> apathetic, and exhibited a practically blank personality. Additionally, he was diagnosed with a schizoid personality disorder, which shed light on his reserved and socially awkward behavior. These findings contributed to a deeper understanding of Aaron's mental state at the time of the crime. Amidst the legal proceedings, Aaron's defense team, consisting of Pierre Bazel and Jennifer McCann, faced scrutiny for discussing the case on their social media accounts and allegedly leaking the court-ordered psychological examination to the press. This led to concerns about their ability to handle such a complex and high-profile case, prompting criticism from Justice Neil J. Firetog. Levy Kletsky's family and the prosecution sought justice, and on August 1, 2012, a plea bargain agreement was reached between the defense and the prosecutors. Aaron changed his plea to guilty, admitting to one charge of second-degree murder and one charge of second-degree kidnapping. During the court proceedings, Aaron confessed in a handwritten statement that he had encountered Libby on the street, claiming that the young boy had asked him for directions. Aaron said that he offered Libby a ride and suggested they attend a wedding in Monsey, New York. However, he later panicked upon seeing missing child posters and ultimately decided to smother Libby with a towel in his apartment. After taking Libby's life, Aaron dismembered his body, placing the remains in bags and a red suitcase. He callously disposed of some of the remains in a dumpster in another Brooklyn neighborhood. As part of the plea agreement, Aaron was sentenced by Judge Neil J. Faritog on August 29, 2012, to 25 years to life in prison for second-degree murder and 15 years to life for second-degree kidnapping. This meant that Aaron would be eligible for parole in 2051, taking into account credit for time served. The legal proceedings brought a measure of closure to the Kletsky family and the community that had been shattered by the tragedy. However, the impact of Libby's death reverberated far beyond the confines of the courtroom. The case prompted discussions about community safety, the protection of children, and the need for enhanced security measures to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. 
In the aftermath of Liebig Kletsky's murder, civil lawsuits were filed. Liebig's father, Nachman Kletsky, filed a $100 million civil lawsuit against Liebig Aaron, seeking damages for the abduction, kidnapping, torture, murder, and dismemberment of his son. Additionally, a lawsuit was filed against Aaron's father, Jack, accusing him of neglecting to monitor his son or protect Levy while he was in their home. The legacy of Levy Kletsky lives on through memorials and initiatives aimed at preventing such tragedies from occurring again. The Levy Kletsky Memorial Fund was established to raise funds to help children and families in crisis and need. Proposed legislation, such as Liebe's Initiative and Liebe's Law, sought to enhance safety measures and provide support to lost or distressed children. Following the devastating event, Liebe's family established the Liebe Kletsky Memorial Fund, which aimed to raise $1 million to assist children and families in crisis and need. The fund received an overwhelming response from the community, with thousands of individuals making donations to support the cause. This heartfelt response demonstrated the unity and support that emerged in the face of tragedy. In the music industry, Hasidic singer Lepa Schmelzer released a touching ballad titled Liebe Forever, accompanied by a music video that included home movies of Liebe growing up. The video also incorporated CCTV footage of Liebe's abduction, serving as a reminder of the immense loss suffered by the community. The song and video served as a tribute to Liebe's memory and a way to honor his life. In terms of legislative action, several proposals were put forth to enhance safety measures and provide support for lost or distressed children. In September 2013, Assemblyman Dov Hikind and State Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos announced the implementation of the Liebe Kletsky Security Initiative. This initiative involved the installation of 100 security cameras on public lampposts in the Midwood and Borough Park neighborhoods. The cameras, funded by a $1 million state grant, would be maintained by Secure Watch 24 a private security firm controlled by Avudath Israel of America. The recorded footage would be accessible only to the New York City Police Department and would serve as an additional measure to enhance community safety. Another proposed legislation, known as Liebe's Law, was introduced by New York City Councilman David Greenfield. The law would designate businesses as safe places for children who are lost or in trouble, Employees in these businesses would undergo background checks, and the businesses would display a green sticker in their windows to signify that they are safe havens for children seeking help. This initiative aimed to create a sense of security and provide immediate assistance to children in distress. The Brooklyn District Attorney's Office launched the Safe Stop program, wherein participating stores displayed a green safe haven sticker in their windows. These designated safe places offered refuge and assistance to lost children, providing a network of support within the community. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest true crime cases. We appreciate having you as part of our community as we explore the mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and remember justice may stay hidden in the darkest corner. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.